We've lived on our sailboat for about three years now. We've actively used it and sailed about 10,000 miles. In that time, we've been able to figure out what knots you actually use while living on a sailboat. So what's the reality of need to know knot knowledge after three years of living on the water? So I've narrowed it down to the eight knots that I actually use day to day while living and sailing on our sailboat. So the first three knots are pretty much like the big three. You have to know them to live on a boat. There's really no way of living on a boat and not knowing these knots. So like these are non-negotiable. You have to know these knots. Number one is the bowline. The first knot, of course, is the king of knots. It's the bowline knot. I'll tie one real quick. The bowline knot is a general purpose knot that's just good for tying around something and pulling really, really hard. And it won't slip. And the great thing about it is even if you pull on it very, very hard, it still breaks open really easily and unties and without much issue. It's one of those knots that once you learn it, you kind of overuse it and use it for tying to almost everything. And it's not a bad idea. This is a good knot. On a sailboat, you use it to tie your sheets to your sails, your sail and, and your halyards to your sails. Pretty much attaching the end of a rope to anything ends up being a, uh, a bowlin. I've got a really good video teaching how to tie a bowlin that I will link below. I'm not going to teach it here. Number two is the clove hitch and that's basically tying a line to a fixed object like a pole. I'll tie that real quick. So this is a clove hitch. There's like a billion videos on the internet on how to tie these. I might make one because I have some tips that I've come to appreciate. In day-to-day -day life, you use this for tying your fenders predominantly, or many times you'll use this for tying your painter to the dinghy dock. And the last of the big three, one of the ones you use almost every single day, is a cleat hitch. I've got a video linked below on how to tie a cleat hitch. It is easy to do wrong. Most people will learn it and then do it right half the time and then wrong half the time just because you they learn the twist on one side, not the other side. Those three are non-negotiable and they're kind of obvious if you're getting into sailing, you're gonna have to learn those. Next up is the sheet bend. At first, I didn't really appreciate this knot and I didn't use it. But I started playing with it, and this is one of the knots that, while maybe not vital for living on a boat, once you learn it, you tend to end up using it a fair bit. And this is basically the go-to knot for tying two ropes together. The way I used this one the most this cruising season was, uh, was that our dinghy anchor had about 15 feet of a uh, line off of it, and I would tie the dinghy anchor to the painter for pulling up on a beach and throwing the anchor in the sand. That way we didn't always have to have the dinghy anchor tied up. And it's a pretty easy knot to break. I will make a video in the next few weeks about how to tie this knot. But fun fact, if you look at the sheet bend right here, and then look at the bowline knot, it's the same exact knot, which is crazy. But it goes to explain why they're both easy to break when they've had load on them. Another fun fact, the reason that this was called the sheet bend was because if you needed to escape out of a second story building, this was a quick and convenient way and secure enough way to tie strips of sheets together so you could like make a rope ladder for yourself and get out. So the sheet bend is a way to remember it. The next knot is a rolling hitch knot. This knot is more of a working knot. You don't like tie it and leave it up. It's particularly useful on sailboats when you get something stuck. Like if you get an override in your winch where you're basically your uh, line gets all tangled and you can't tighten it anymore and you can't loosen it. Or if you get a clutch or jammer that gets jammed and you can't open it because there's too much load on it. The rolling hitch is the perfect knot for that. And I have used it probably once or twice a season to unstuck something that was stuck. I'll make a video on how to use it, but in short, if you have a line like this, and pretend this line is super, super jammed, and it's stuck, it's just super tight, and there's no way this uh, clutch is gonna open because there's an issue with it, what do you do? You tie a rolling hitch, and you take this line, put it around another winch, tension it a lot, it'll take the load off of the jammer, usually enough to pop it open. And then from there, you ease it off the winch and you're good to go. So this is a working knot. You tend to not leave them in place for very long, but it is something I actually use. 
I feel like I have to say a stop or not because they do mention them in your sailing school quite a lot. And the stop or not is something you do need to know, but honestly, I only tie these when one of them fell out or really, and that tends to not happen. Or if I'm replacing a line or if I need to work a line backwards through a clutch or a block or something like that, I'll untie a stop or not and retie a stop or not. I tend to prefer the double overhand knot. It's a great little stop or not. And I like this one better than figure eight because you can break it really easily by pulling these two bites apart. So. Uh, you can also learn the figure eight, but you kind of do need to know a stop or not. They are right in sailing school about that one. Number seven of eight, a constrictor knot. This one is a nifty knot that I learned recently, and this knot you can actually use as like a tool, as hardware. You can tie a constrictor knot around something like, say, a hose or a bundle of things you need to hold together, and it will hold. These constrictor knots, I didn't know about this knot. It's kind of like a variation on the uh, clove hitch, but a constrictor knot holds amazingly strongly. And if it's not quite holding, say you have kind of a slippy line, you can tie a double constrictor knot. I use this when I'm tying things together and, well, squeezing them down. For example, bundles of wood that I'm bringing back to the boat, or if I have something big that I've rolled up, I'll tie constrictor knots around it like a sleeping bag or whatever, because you tighten it down and it just won't open. I'll make a video on constrictor knot, super useful knot. I've read somewhere that if the bowline is the king of knots, the constrictor knot is the queen of knots. And a trucker stitch. This is one I've actually known since before living on a boat. This is also one that you kind of tend to overuse once you learn it. Uh, and it's similar to the constrictor knot insofar as it bundles things together. But the trucker's hitch is one of the ones where if you can't pull strong enough with your own hands, you can use the trucker's hitch to kind of gain leverage and make a super tight binding. I actually use a number of spots to hold things together on our boat. For instance, our door frames for the sliding glass doors here. Frames are kind of breaking and the screws that hold them together are stripped out. So I've used trucker hitch to tighten them down. And honestly, I've left this tied together for about a year now since it's uh, not time to buy a new door and the trucker's hitch is fine. Use a trucker's hitch a lot, mostly for not necessarily sailing, but for binding things together where you need a mechanical advantage. So that's it, that's the eight knots that you need to learn, but there is a bonus knot. The reason this isn't part of the main knots is this is somewhat of an ephemeral knot. You kind of tie this really quick and it only lasts for as long as you're doing some effort and then it goes away, uh, but after I learned this knot, there was a number of instances where, where, where knowing it proved super useful. It got me out of situations a lot easier than it would have been had I not known this. So the Marlin Spike Hitch, if you have a rope that's secure and some sort of stick, um, I got this pole right here. So I tied that. The nice thing is, is you can tie it in the middle of the line and you can pull. I've used this once we got our windsock stuck at the top of the spinnaker and I tied a boat hook this style with the uh, haul down. So we were a little bit new at flying spinnakers and we couldn't douse it because it was overloaded. So I used this to brute force getting it down where I tied a boat hook in the middle of the haul down line and both Kelsey and I hung from it until we were able to pull it down and uh, squeeze the spinnaker enough to make it easy. Um, I've also used this to basically adds a handle to any line so you're not pulling it with your hands if you ever feel like you don't have the hand strength or mechanical advantage instead of wrapping it around your hands just grab a stick make a mar spike hitch but the great thing about this is, is when you're done it just slides out i'll make a video on this super great one that's the bonus one because it's kind of ephemeral uh, but i do use it a few times a season And lastly, maybe an honorable mention, but not really, is the square knot. The square knot's one of those ones you're supposed to learn in sailing school, I'm pretty sure, and people talk about it. There's no job that the square knot can do that one of these other eight can't, really, uh, except for maybe tying reefs. The other name for a square knot is a reef knot, and the whole point is you can go up and tie your reef down at the cringles of your sail. Our sail's not set up to be reefed this way, so we never need a reef knot, and I almost never use a square knot. Once you learn a square knot, it kind of gets overused for applications where it's not really intended. 
and it works and it's okay but it's always like a little bit dissatisfying because it only like mostly works but not really um, and it slips out it shakes out the whole point is it's supposed to be easy to shake out a reef so a square knot a reef knot is supposed to be easy-ish to shake out it's also fairly easy for new people to uh, get it backwards and tie the granny knot is what they call it honestly for the past three years of sailing I've rarely used the square knot uh, almost never honestly that's the eight knots plus a bonus knot that I've used for the past three years living on a boat sailing there are more knots there are some better knots and I'm not saying that you there's no point in learning more what I am saying is that if you learn these eight you can get by and get most things done that you need to get done on the boat you should absolutely invest in a book of knots and you should absolutely practice learning them but if you have to have a minimum set of knots that will make you functional on a boat, this is them. All right, I'm gonna link the videos below for the knots that I've already made tutorials on and I'm gonna make tutorials for the rest of them uh, and you'll see them coming out peppered over the next week or so. so. That's it for this video, but I would like to ask one thing. For those of you who have lived on boats for quite a while, what are some go-to knots that you do actually use on a regular basis and you think would be valuable for other people to learn? All right, thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.